welcome to episode 47, Back to Trusses. And we are going to be starting to install roof trusses again. If you'd like to follow along this project, you are invited to subscribe. That nail I just drove in is to help position the truss. This is a tool that I made to lift the trusses into place. You can see this at 15.01 in the video. 15 minutes, 1 second. That's the nail I just drove in. And that board that fell is my truss lifting tool. It uh, didn't get put in a more secure location. Bad Jeff. So you can see that I have that nail positioned where the truss goes and then I slide the truss out to the nail. Then I'm going to come over to the center and position the ladder so that I can climb up there and put the first uh, blocking between truss number two and this truss number three. Let me just get the ladder set up here. It's a very complicated operation demanding high levels of precision so just bear with me a second while I get the ladder exactly where it needs to be. Okay, so I have repositioned the camera over here. I'm going to climb up the ladder and do a little prep work, getting the trusses ready, and then install block on the bottom. You can see the block in the first truss to the second truss. So we're just going to repeat that from the second truss to the third truss. And there's the piece of block right there. It's 13 and 3 quarters of an inch long. The first three trusses are spaced 16 inches apart. The uh, second truss is spaced out from that bathroom window there and we will need to custom frame a little uh, window trough up there so that uh, there's a little ledge in front of the window and uh, we'll get like a stainless steel pan to put um, in that trough area for uh, rain protection and then you would also be able to put flower pots or whatever out there and the stainless steel will be very tough and uh, waterproof, wear resistant. Okay, so I just wrapped a piece of 14 to electrical wire between the two trusses, and that is to prevent the truss number three from accidentally falling forward. And you see that I have a center wall built there, and we put that up so that if the trusses fall, they will fall onto that wall and not all the way around, upside down. And then it also makes it easier to slide the trusses from where the stack of trusses is in the center of the house into each of the consecutive positions. So I have the air nailer there, palm nailer, and I'm just going to be popping in a couple of uh, number 10 Simpson galvanized nails. And I'm installing a uh, LUS, um, I think it's a 6 bracket for a 2x6. <coughs> Those are 2x6 boards that we are putting to block between trusses. And this is just the first block. The uh, 
manufacturer's instructions have many more blocks going in place. And so I'm just nailing things off. We have to nail through nail plates. And what I have there is a bar clamp. And that's going to hold the trusses firmly together so that when I nail, they aren't being uh, knocked apart from each other. It will hold the gaps tight so that I can nail them off and they have a nice tight fit when I'm done. There's a 12 and a quarter inch overhang on each side from the wall out to the end of the rafters that I'm just checking my measurement there. The trusses end up having uh, 12 and a quarter inches between them. I think that's what it was. No, not the 12 and a quarter. That was on the uh, side rafters. These are... 13 and 7 eighths between rafters. And so I'm just checking to make sure everything is in the correct position. So what 
I'm doing there is popping a nail straight up through the bottom of the hanger and that's just going to give it a little bit more holding power. We have plenty more bracketing that we need to do to attach the trusses to the house. same technique over here. Get the bracket on the two top plates and then nail it off. I just have to look out here and check something for a second. Uh, I'm double checking the measurement on the rafter tail just to make sure. before I completely nail everything off. And what I'll do is I will nail a long Simpson galvanized nail to the bottom top plate. There's one nail goes into that and so I use the long nail and then all the other nails I just use the uh, number 10 inch and a half Simpson nail hanger nails up the truss here in a minute. Tomorrow I will uh, show the truss lifting tool in use. Uh, there were distractions today and so I didn't get an opportunity to film it being used or not film but video record. Terminology has changed. You used to film things and now you, you use a videotape and now you just simply record onto a chip. This is the truss lifting tool I made. 
It's with a 12 foot 2 by 6 cut to 2 and 3 quarters by 1 and a half. And then that is about a 3 foot piece of rebar with plumber's tape holding it. And then there's a slot cut in the top of there and filled with plumber's tape wrapping it to hold it together when you start torquing on it. And that is what it looks like. So it works very, very nicely. And we've got some more trusses up now. I've been waiting for the um, excavation guys to come in and do their work, but they, I guess, are busy with a petroleum contaminated soil project. PCS is what you call it. So, um, anyway, there's three trusses up, and tomorrow I should have a few more up. It'll be a little more dedicated to doing trusses tomorrow. Let's uh, go back to a wide angle. And you can see the excavation from up here. Oh, there's Leo. Let's uh, raise the light level here. So, um, yeah, just waiting to get the ditch filled and then put the uh, gravel in. up and uh, get on out of here. Take my cargo straps. And let's see, Leo. Hi Leo, what you doing? What you doing buddy? Look at that good boy. Look at that, uh oh, Mr. Sprinkles. Mr. Sprinkles. Hey, Mr. Sprinkles. Okay.